De Deputy Mayor Pro Tem, anytime you're ready. He's not even listening. Anytime you're ready, man. We got a meeting to run. All right. So nice to see a, a full council chamber. It's been a long time since we've been able to get together like this, and it's for a happy occasion. So I'm glad, glad to see so many people here. I now declare that the Planet City Council is convened into open session and that all council members are present, and Councilwoman Bao is, is with us via Zoom. Our first item on the preliminary agenda is canvassing the election results. Uh, Lisa, if you please read the first caption for consideration of resolution canvassing the returns and declaring the results of the bond election held May 1st, 2021 and resolving other mat matters incidents related thereto. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Before we begin the canvas, let me review some of the general information related to the May 1st general special election to fill a vacancy and bond elections. Um, City Secretary's office maintains the full reports used in this canvas. The results are from both Denton and Collin counties and includes a certification that the results have been checked and compared to all ballots tabulated for the City of Plano general special and bond election. Included in the canvassing documents are a summary report and individual reports from each entity. Please note there are 174,521 registered voters in Plano, Plano and of the eligible voters, 35,380 or 20.27% cast ballots in this election. 1,343 individuals voted via mail or absentee ballot and 26 provisional ballots were cast. We will begin canvassing the bond election. Consideration of a resolution canvassing the returns and declaring the results of the bond election to be held, bond election held May 1st, 2021 and resolving other matters. Proposition A, the issuance of 231 million general obligation bonds for street improvements and the imposition of a tax, a tax sufficient to pay the principal of and interest on the bonds for 25,575 against 7,956. Proposition B, the issuance of 81,935,000 general obligation bonds for park and recreational facilities and the imposition of a tax sufficient to pay the principal of and the interest on the bonds for 23,473 against 9,983. Proposition C, the issuance of 15,900,000 general obligation bonds for improvements to the Tom Muhlenbeck Recreation Center and the imposition of a tax sufficient to pay the principal of and the interest on the bonds for 18,185 against 14,783. Proposition D, the issuance of 27,140,000 general obligation bonds for public safety facilities and the imposition of a tax sufficient to pay the principal of and interest on the bonds for 23,655 against 9,297. Proposition E, the issuance of 5,500,000 general obligation bonds for the improvements to existing municipal facilities and the imposition of a tax sufficient to pay the principal of and interest on the bonds for 19,783 against 12,891. Proposition F, the issuance of 2,000, or excuse me, 2,490,000 general obligation bonds for the city's library facilities and the imposition of a tax sufficient to pay the principal of and interest on the bonds for 23,761 against 9,239. This concludes the Canvas report for the bond election. Thank you, Lisa. I'll entertain a motion to accept the canvassing and consideration of resolution. Motion to accept the canvassing. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, council vote. Uh, 
Uh, Lily, will you uh, verbally, so we can have it for the record? Oh, I think she said yes. Let's give her a second. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, so, so let the record reflect that that item passes eight to zero. Item number two. Okay. Cons consideration resolution canvassing the election returns of the special election of May 1st, 2021 for the election of council member place seven for unexpired term until May of 2023 general election, declaring the results and resolving the matter on the subject. Okay, the results for council member place number seven, David M. Smith, 4,595, Julie Homer, 10,910, Sandeep Srivastava, 3,779, Chris Robertson, 10,516, and Bill Lyle, 2,455. And this concludes the report. Okay, we'll accept the motion to uh, accept the report on the special election. Motion to approve. Motion. Second the motion. Motion and a second. Council vote. Lily verbally, please. Lily, there you go. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, let the record reflect that that passes eight to zero. Item number three, consideration of a resolution canvassing the election returns of the general election of May 1st, 2021 for the election of four members of council places, two, four, six, six being the mayor position and eight for a term of four years declaring the result and resolving other matters on the subject. Council member place number two, Anthony Riccardelli, 17,477, Steve Levine, 15,606. Place number four, Vidal Quintanilla, 1,551, Justin Adcock, 13,807, Casey Prince, 12,494, Nasat Parveen, 4,594. Place number six, Mayor, Lydia Ortega, 1,370, Lily Bao, 15,119, John Munns, 18,482. Place number eight, Elisa Klein, 15,180, Rick Smith, 17,084. This concludes the Canvas report for the general election. Okay, we'll entertain a motion to accept the, general, the canvassing for the general election. Motion to approve. Motion. Second motion. And a second. Council vote. Um, yes. And let that uh, go on the records as a eight to zero vote as well. Boy, we get along these these days, isn't that great? <laughs> it's a good thing, right? Okay. So now uh, this brings us to item four, which is the oath of office for incoming council members. Yes, yes. Good memory, Lisa. Okay. Raise your right hand. Okay. Do you, Anthony Riccardelli, solemnly swear or excuse me, affirm that you will faithfully execute the duties of the office of Plano City Council Member, place number two, of the City of Plano, State of Texas, and will, to the best of your ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States and of the state and the charter and the ordinances of this city, and you furthermore affirm that you have not directly or indirectly paid, offered, or promised to pay, contributed nor promised to contribute any money or valuable thing, or promised any public office or employment as a reward for the giving or withholding of a vote at the election at which you were elected. I do. Okay. Congratulations. Hey, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You too. You too. Thank you. Oh, 
Almost forgot that part. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. There we go. Oh, here, honey, here, Ethan. Yeah. Okay. Oh, did you want to talk about it? Yeah, you can take the next topic. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that way we can see those beautiful smiles. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys. Thanks, honey. Thanks, Ethan. Stand over there. Do you, Rick Smith, solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully execute the duties of the office of Plano City Council Member, place number eight of the City of Plano, State of Texas? and will, to the best of your ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and of this state and the Charter and the ordinances of the city. And you furthermore solemnly swear or affirm that you have not directly paid or indirectly paid, offered or promised to pay, contributed nor promised to contribute any money or valuable thing or promised any public office or employment as a reward for the giving or withholding of a vote at the election for, at which you were elected to help you go. I do. All right. I'm not going to put my glasses on. Do you, John B. Munn, solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully execute the duties of Plano City Council member, Play 6 Mayor of the City of Plano, State of Texas, and will, to the best of your ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States and of this state, and the Charter and the ordinances of the city? And furthermore, you solemnly swear or affirm that you have not directly or indirectly paid, offered, promised to pay, contributed, nor promised to contribute any money or valuable thing, or promised any public office or employment as reward for the giving or withholding of a vote at the election at which you were elected. So be God. I do. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Can I have him here? Be free. Be six. Sure. Okay. Let me take a picture of 
tractors. <laughs> if you want to go ahead and take your picture now, okay. that's great. You want to do that now? You want to do that now? Sure. You want to do your family pictures now? We'll do it after. Okay. All right. <laughs> It's a lot. We got a lot of people. Oh, that's, uh... So, Mayor, if you could come up here. Why don't you sit on that seat first so we can get that photo out? If I may exercise the point of privilege and ask you to come back here, so I say a few words. <laughs> it's all optics, man. It's all optics. So, I, um, in closing, I'd like to say a few words. I can't touch this. Here we go. Um, first, I'd like to thank my family uh, for supporting me over the past years. Uh, my wife and my daughters. Um, there's not a day that my daughters have been alive that they haven't seen my my wife and I involved in community service. And so being in this role has truly been a gift I've been able to give them. So I thank, thank, I'm thankful for having that opportunity, but I thank them for supporting me. I want to thank their city staff for the constant pursuit of excellence. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of pride and privilege to say you're the mayor of Plano. And I put pressure on them because I brag and I'm obnoxious about how great we are. And they, they back me up every time. I, I, put, I put the pressure on them to be the best that they can be. And um, Mayor Munz, you will, you're getting a, one of the most highly professional, uh, competent, uh, high-level uh, community servants in the form of the, this 2,000 people or so. Uh, so Mayor Munz, I was, you know, was going to write you a letter for you to have as mayor. You know, your first day of mayor, and I thought maybe I'd just share my thoughts with you publicly because, um, you know, in, in what happens here kind of in our on city council always happens in the light of day. So I want to just say a few words. Um, when I would often send an email at midnight or three in the morning, whenever it is, I would sometimes, like I've sent to you during the campaign, yeah, uh, I would always, I often would write, write Mayor A-D-E-D. And it meant all day, every day. And what you're going to find is, uh, now that you have this position, you may leave your house to go have dinner with Joa or spend time with your grandkids, but you will be mayor no matter where you go. And that can be all-encompassing sometimes. And, it's to, and it, it, sometimes it feels like a burden, but most times it's, it's the wings beneath your wing to kind of bring you higher. To quote... Our current president, when he's talking about something else, being the mayor of Plano is a big effing deal. <laughs> it, it really is. And I mean it. And, um, and a lot of times you're going to be surrounded by a lot of people. And sometimes you'll feel, you'll feel alone. But I'll just say to you that what you can rely on is when you go out to the schools and you watch the children and you talk to them and you whisper in their ear that... Uh, you're in sitting in that seat to make a decision for them for the next 10, 15 years that you, you work to get their parents' vote and their grandparents' vote, but you're there for them. That will be a compass to always guide you and think about what's ahead of you, not, not what's just in front of you. Um, the weight of the office will force you to be better, a better person, a better, uh, a better man, uh, and just make you a better person better at everything you do because of the significance of the seat you hold. So like I've said before, I thought the role of the mayor was to be the soul of the city. What you're going to find is that your role is just to simply reflect the soul that's already out there. And you give them, you give the city what you have, they'll give you it back 10 times more. So, uh, so to our citizens, my li I'd like to just say, uh, I guess I should over here so y'all can see me too. Come over here. Let's just sit sideways. Right. I, I don't want to have my back to, to the side of the side of the room. To, the, to, to our citizens, I thank you for 
given me the opportunity to serve. Uh, this was my calling. I was born to be a mayor someday. I just didn't know I was going to be the mayor of Plano. And, uh, and I'm fortunate to, to, to be here. And it's been an absolute privilege to, to represent this community. So as my last act, I'm going to pass the gavel. Now, if there's one thing I've learned is what a photo op is. So I, this, this, this passing of the gavel is going to be epic. Come over here, John. <laughs> All right. So being mayor is, is a marathon. You're the 40th mayor in our nearly 150-year history. Uh, Plano will celebrate 149th birthday in, is it June or July? June, in June. And so, like I said, it's a big deal. And so, but it's a marathon. You're the 40th one. And, you know, before we, we were talking, I found out that Mayor Munn's father was the mayor of Plano when I moved here. So it's come full circle for me to have had him my mayor. <laughs> and to pass the gavel to you. So since it's a marathon, I want you to do this. I want you to go like this. <laughs> oh, hold on, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more. And the caption will be, at the run for us excellence continues with the new mayor, Mayor Munn. I appreciate you. And I'm glad you're here because I didn't prepare for the meeting, so you're going to have to take it <laughs> Can we take yes. a picture? Come on. Yes. Yes. We can empty half of this chamber. <laughs> <laughs> one down. All of it. All of it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come here. Stand right here, Ben. Okay. I'll make this anticlimactic. The council will now recess into executive session. <laughs> in training room A to hold a closed executive meeting pursuant to the provisions of Vernon's Texas Code's annotated government code, chapter 551, the Open Meetings Act in accordance with the authority contained in section 551.071 to consult with attorney to receive legal advice and discuss litigation. Thank you.
I now declare the Plano City Council preliminary open meeting is reconvened in open session that all council members are present. Our first item is on the preliminary agenda is consideration and action resulting from the executive session. We have none, so we can move on to the next item. Next item is DART quarterly report. Uh, we have uh, Paul Wageman and uh, Mayor Robert Dye, uh, DART board directors. <clears throat> Mayor, thank you very much. This is Paul Wageman. I'm uh, one of Plano's two appointees to the DART board <clears throat> and uh, wanted to congratulate you and all the new council and returning council members uh, on their successful outcomes of their election, as well as to thank the service of uh, the mayor and the former council members as well. So thank you. I'm joined today, as you mentioned, uh, Mayor, by Robert Dye, who is uh, the mayor of Farmers Branch and serves as Plano's, um, one of Plano's two appointees to the DART board. And also with us is our interim president and CEO, David Leininger, uh, who has uh, agreed to serve in that capacity at DART during the uh, interim period in which Mr. Gary Thomas's uh, resignation until we are able to bring aboard our new CEO. And that's what I wanted to visit with you and the council members about today. We uh, uh, met as a board in late April to appoint Nadine Lee, who is currently the chief of staff to the Los Angeles Metropolitan Transportation Authority as our new CEO. And she'll be joining the agency in July, July 12th to be exact. Nadine uh, came to uh, LA Metro from um, from Denver, where she uh, was a uh, practicing uh, professional engineer and responsible for project development of a major bus rapid transit line. While at Metro in LA, she was the deputy uh, executive director of their office of chief innovation. Pardon me, she was the deputy chief innovation officer in their office of extraordinary innovation, which led to their tenure uh, plan for strategic action to improve mobility in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County. Uh, when Gary announced at the end of last year that he was uh, going to step down uh, and take early retirement, uh, the, I appointed a ad hoc committee of seven board members, and we met uh, in a very deliberate fashion for about uh, four and a half to five months. We had excellent candidates to consider, and Nadine really rose to the top and very excited to have her joining us. And we'll be reaching out to uh, both to the city manager of Plano and uh, Mayor Munns, our new mayor, uh, to meet with Miss Lee um, actually next week, uh, if they're available, she'll be in town. As I mentioned, she doesn't start till July 12th, uh, but she'll be making a visit to Dallas to meet some of the folks at Darden in our, our 13 cities. Um, I don't wanna steal Mr. Leininger's wonder, uh, thunder here or Mayor Dye's, uh, but we uh, we have provided the staff a PowerPoint presentation as well as a written uh, document that provides uh, an update on all the items. And so I'd like to just turn it over briefly first to Mayor Dye and then Mr. Leininger, and, and we're pleased to answer any questions, Mayor, that you might have after after they're done. Robert, I didn't know if you'd like to say a few words regarding our uh, hiring of Ms. Lee. Um, first. Mayor and Council, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to serve on behalf not only of the City of Farmers Branch, but on behalf of the City of Plano and to those newly elected. Congratulations uh, to Mayor Harry and those outgoing. Uh, you know, you will be missed and your service uh, is definitely noted, not only for Plano, but uh, for the regions and the efforts uh, that you all made. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, hiring Miss Lee uh, is, a, is a great step for DART. Uh, I think her skill sets are going to provide kind of a new generation of leadership and innovation uh, for DART that is not only gonna help the city of Dallas, but our entire region as a whole. And so I think it's, you know, she was the, the right candidate and as Mr. Wageman so eloquently put, she clearly rose to the top and uh, we couldn't be more honored to have her uh, as the new director coming in in July. David. You may be muted, David. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Wageman. Uh, <clears throat> again, I'm David Leininger. Uh, <clears throat> I've been serving in this capacity 
as the interim president and CEO. Uh, effectively, since February 1st, uh, I came back to the agency in, de in December to work with Gary Thomas uh, during that period of time uh, from uh, December and January to kind of <clears throat> get caught back up. As some of you may recall, I was the executive vice president, chief financial officer for nine years uh, before retiring uh, from DART in in the 2018 time frame. So <clears throat> fortunately, uh, not too much time had gone by, so most of the uh, faces are familiar, many of the projects are familiar. Um, the uh, a couple overall comments. First of all, I can tell you that on behalf of the staff uh, at DART, there's a great deal of enthusiasm and excitement about Nadine Lee. She's very accomplished. She's well known in our circle, so to speak. Uh, she's uh, been a leader in a number of initiatives on technology that we're aware of. Uh, you probably wouldn't be known necessarily, but Los Angeles uh, Metro, uh, DART, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Denver RTD and MARTA uh, have worked with DART over the last almost decade on a uh, executive training uh, uh, program where we exchange people for a period of time across the year um, at, at uh, various levels, give people an opportunity to see other agencies. LA Metro is always an agency that we you know, like to work with because uh, they do a lot of very interesting things. They have a complicated agency, uh, and uh, it was always uh, <clears throat> uh, very productive to work with them. Uh, a little bit about the Office of Extraordinary Innovation. Uh, that was an initiative that <clears throat> the uh, uh, the now retiring uh, CEO, Phil Washington, who came from RTD in Denver, uh, had brought uh, into that office. And it was about accelerating the pace of the introduction of new projects, new changes, changes in the way things are being done. And it's essentially built around the concept of, of openly accepting unsolicited proposals, having a structured process for evaluating them, and then getting them adopted and implemented uh, if they could be uh, deemed to have merit and would lead to a better delivery of service. Uh, so Nadine was very heavily involved in that, very actively involved, very successful program, and I know she's going to bring a lot of that, uh, that experience and background to uh, DART and its uh, 13 municipalities that we serve. Uh, the other thing about that is that uh, we all know, uh, again, from some prior experience, she has a deep commitment to customer service and to ridership experience um, and is very, very focused on, on that dimension. She's got an engineering background, which is wonderful. Uh, and we obviously have a lot of large projects and continuing in DART, but having that uh, customer facing uh, perspective is really, uh, really important. And I think uh, in her relative youth, uh, I'm 74 years old, so I'm not, uh, I'm of the, ex the generation passing. Uh, and Nadine is, uh, is really energizing our, our management team, our middle management team, and our next generation of leadership. Um, and it's going to be uh, really interesting to watch how that unfolds. Uh, so with that, I would just comment, as uh, Chair Wageman had indicated, that she's doing a quick in and out. Next week, uh, we're going to have an opportunity to have some structured uh, meet and greets with the mayors and city managers either on Monday or Tuesday, uh, so that uh, we've sent that notice to the respective offices on that. Uh, so just to create an opportunity for a, a first opportunity for an introduction, uh, she's gonna be busy. She's going to meet with staff, uh, detailed staff members uh, over the next, uh, those two days, and then go tour all of our facilities and fit all that in and then uh, hop in a plane and fly back. As uh, Chair Wageman indicated, she does have a day job. Uh, she with LA Metro and we'll be there until the 28th and they'll be joining us on July uh, 12th. So a couple things is quickly uh, that, that uh, without taking you all the way through the slide presentation, because uh, I know that uh, both the slide presentation and the letter of transmittal uh, were provided to staff uh, last week and, and are distributed to you. But I did want to mention number one, that uh, the ridership levels um, across the system are, are beginning to slowly recover. We're now up to about 60% uh, on our, our light rail and, and bus uh, modes, uh, less than that still on uh, paratransit uh, and GoLink. Uh, paratransit, we think, is partly related to people 
being very tentative about uh, kind of coming back in because they do have uh, comorbidity conditions that they're very associated with, but they're gaining as well. Uh, and then commuter rail has actually uh, slowed down a bit. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's just now beginning to build. An interesting uh, just observation is that we're getting very good mass compliance and uh, commuter rail is uh, reporting. We count actually on commuter rail daily because we do have conductors uh, and we're in the five to 10 uh, people who don't have masks, uh, which is a very low number. And we're, uh, we're pleased to see that people are still respecting that. Uh, that uh, circumstance. Uh, a little bit about our workforce and COVID. Uh, we have been tracking COVID very carefully over the, the year or so that's gone on. Uh, staff met for uh, virtually uh, 11 months, three times a week at 7.30 to review our situation. As you might expect, uh, we began to see some spikes uh, in the fall. 95% uh, of all of the positives that were reported uh, were identified as being uh, contracted outside of the workplace, uh, and we do uh, tracking on every reported instance. We've had uh, one or none uh, reported positives for the last several weeks, and uh, we are now in the process of uh, working very hard to get all of our workforce, or as many as possible, vaccinated. Uh, within the last two weeks, we've actually had on-site vaccinations at uh, 1401 in all of our yards. So we've made a very concerted push to make sure that we've created every opportunity for our workforce, including uh, their, uh, their dependents, to, to come to our locations and get vaccinated if they were otherwise unable to. I should report that about half of the workforce uh, that was invited for those sessions actually were already vaccinated. So you can, you can tell from that that there's a great deal of progress and availability of vaccine. On uh, <clears throat> some things of particular interest to Plano, uh, I know <clears throat> the comment was made earlier that we are 100% uh, uh, complete in designs on uh, uh, several of the stations associated with the Silver Line. And uh, it, it really between 60 and 80% on the final uh, touches on the 12th Street so those, those things are, are coming together. We're working with city staff closely on final right-of-way acquisitions and corridor uh, developments that are specific to Plano. Uh, a thing that is uh, very much um, front and center with our staff now is the bus network redesign. Uh, that has been going on for several years. I know you've been heavily involved in it. Your staff's been heavily in, in, involved in this over those, that period of time. We're in the public meeting process now. Uh, staff has met, our staff has met with your, uh, your, your board representatives, Mr. Wageman, and, and uh, we've also met with Mayor Dye. We're also meeting with city staff. Um, and that's leading to uh, a hearing in June and then leading to final consideration of the bus design proposal uh, in August of this year with then a implementation of the new uh, routing scheme in uh, January of 22. Uh, for Plano, that will involve uh, the addition of additional GoLink routes in areas that have limited coverage now. Uh, we're moving toward uh, all day service on uh, midday, uh, whereas we had, uh, we had it was, all day meaning uh, 20 minute uh, intervals as opposed to hour uh, intervals in midday for both bus and rail. Uh, that, that's an area where there is a real ridership opportunity. Uh, when I first came to DART some years ago, uh, one of the things that I, re I recognized early on that our highest uh, ridership demand was actually midday. There are a lot of people who are uh, actually uh, available and interested in riding midday. Uh, it could be seniors, could be students. There's a cross section there that sometimes we forget about uh, that are really constitute a, a, a big group that are transit dependent uh, or, uh, or transit prefer uh, preferable in terms of the ride choices. Uh, <clears throat> with respect to uh, two other big projects, and I'll stop at that point, and <clears throat> the uh, D2 is uh, our subway project downtown. It's a regional project. It would allow us uh, an alternate uh, routing through the downtown area so that uh, we would not uh, run into conflicts if we have a problem in that subway section, uh, either preceding that or in the trans transit mall itself downtown. 
that has been under discussion for a long time. Uh, the city council in Dallas uh, approved the alignment subject to some final refinements and modifications on the east side. Uh, they did that on uh, March 23rd, and we received our FI, FEIS uh, from uh, the FTA uh, shortly thereafter, and we were working on advancing this into engineering with a submission in August. That's a $1.7 billion in 21, uh, 20, 2021 dollars. Uh, so it's a big project, significant project. The Silver Line, as you know, is under construction. Um, and that's a design build project. So it's in various stages of design and, and starting construction. Uh, we just finalized the uh, access agreement with Trinity Metro into DFW uh, off of the, what is, you know, the cotton belt line and into uh, Terminal B. The Silver Line, uh, we're negotiating finalized agreements with the freight rail lines, UP, BNSF, KSF, uh, and C, and then, of course, a number of individual agreements with the cities and a lot of permit activity. So a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts in uh, Silver Line, a lot of agreements to, that we have to negotiate, um, <clears throat> but we are making progress. And right now, the critical thing is to acquire the balance of the right-of-way, complete our freight rail agreements, so we have open access to the entire corridor. With that, um, uh, I'll stop, and uh, we're obviously we're all uh, uh, open to and, and, and will want to receive any questions you might have. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all the new members of the council and mayor. Uh, we look forward to working with you. Thank you, David. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I really appreciate that report. Uh, are there any uh, questions for? Uh... Yes, Councilman Grady. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple of uh, uh, quite quick questions, and then also um, wanted to give you a, a short opinion on one thing. Um, I'm looking at the Plano ridership, and uh, what I'm seeing, if I add it across, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, each one of these numbers is uh, a trip, um, and that is uh, out and back. So uh, I'm looking at it as I add up about 498,000 trips um, in a six month period of time. Am I, am I calculating that correctly? That's a, uh, David Langer, uh, that's a boarding. So that wouldn't be two ways, that'd be one way. Correct, so 498,000 is one way. Um, what I did uh, try to calculate backwards using that, um, figuring that it was a six month period of time uh, is that we are eliminating about 1,370 cars every single day on our roadways using mass transit. So that's, that's kind of part of the statement is um, where are we from a transportation standpoint and how are we trying to help uh, transit and mobility? Um, what I'm seeing is about 1,370 cars that are not being used because they're using mass transit. And so I just wanted to say thank you for that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to um, uh, kind of point out, I guess, for I I really anybody is on the proposed new bus network. Um, the thing that I'm looking forward to and will be looking forward to uh, from the results standpoint um, is the expansion of GoLink on the east side of Plano. Um, that is the one area of Plano that, uh, although we've covered the Go Link on the north side where there weren't permanent bus routes, um, and we've done what it seems like very well there, um, we still have a great deal of need on the east side, and I'm certainly happy to see the expansion of Go Link on the east side so that we can increase transportation and mobility there as well. So thank you very much. That's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. You know, the questions or comments, Councilman Williams. Yes, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> hey, uh, thank you very much for this information. Um, there's actually two things I'd like to bring up. The first is um, I'm looking at the chart of Plano ridership by mode, and uh, I, I can't seem to remember the figures uh, each time that we review these. Uh, in the future, it would be helpful if uh, we could include a uh, comparison, maybe a line chart over time, uh, showing how those have changed. Uh, the second thing, as uh, <clears throat> I have expressed uh, also during uh, every time we've had the review, it would be very good to understand even roughly 
uh, what the expense is that goes toward services in Plano between light rail, bus, and GoLink, um, just to get a, a relative understanding of um, <clears throat> how much of the money that uh, Plano residents put into DART vis-a-vis -vis our sales tax uh, comes back to them as a benefit. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Williams. We'll be sure to uh, provide a comparative chart on the ridership and uh, We'll look forward to continuing to visit with you and staff on responding to your second question. I, I enjoyed the opportunity to visit with you this morning, and we look forward to uh, responding to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Thanks again, gentlemen, for your report, and we appreciate it. We look forward to uh, uh, continuing this discussion, and uh, thanks again for, for your patience today. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Congratulations. <clears throat> Item three is uh, consent and regular agendas. I know, uh, go ahead, Lisa. Um, item P will need to be pulled for individual okay. consideration. So everybody here, item P will be pulled. Any other item uh, council person would like to uh, remove? All right, thank you. Next item uh, is council items for discussion for future agendas. Sure. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Go ahead. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Riccadelli and I have been speaking. Um, uh, various members of the community have raised concerns about uh, sex trafficking in some massage parlors in the city. And we would like to investigate uh, how to take appropriate action uh, whether to allay citizen concerns or take appropriate investigative action uh, to ensure that this kind of thing is not indeed happening in our city. Uh, we'd like to put that on a, um, a future agenda, preferably the next meeting. Uh, but Deputy Mayor Pro Tem has some additional words. Thank you. I'll second uh, putting that on the agenda. And uh, uh, to add a little uh, specificity to what we would like to discuss, state law already contains provisions requiring uh, licensing both of massage facilities and individual massage therapists that, uh, if followed, help to uh, prevent conditions that are conducive to sex trafficking, uh, but if not followed, uh, could uh, uh, give rise to conditions that are conducive. So uh, what we'd like to explore is uh, enforcement of those state laws at the municipal level and also uh, potentially a mechanism for uh, revoking a certificate of occupancy for repeated violations of those state laws or uh, something similar to that. Mayor, we'll bring that back as soon as we are able. All right. Anyone else? Okay. We will uh, take a recess and return at 7 p.m. Thank you.
I now declare that the Plano City Council is reconvened in open session, that all members are present. We'll begin tonight's regular meeting with the invocation led by Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Anthony Riccadelli and the Pledge of Allegiance and Texas Pledge by Councilman Rick Grady. Would you please rise? <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for elections and, and we thank you for the peaceful transfer of power. We thank you for the passion of everyone who ran in these elections and everyone who voted. We thank you for the record turnout of more than 35,000 voters and for the passion that residents showed for our community. We pray for a spirit of brotherly and sisterly love to pervade our community and that we would work for the benefit of one another. We thank you for the service of Mayor LaRosselier and we pray for your blessings upon the tenure of Mayor Munns. We pray for wisdom and discernment for all of us who serve this city on the council and on the city staff, on boards and commissions, and for everyone who is involved in making our community the best that it can be. And we pray for your blessings and guidance upon us all. In your son's name, amen. Now the United States uh, pledge followed by the Texas pledge. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Thank you. We have three proclamations tonight. Our first proclamation is May 17th, 2021 is Bike to Work Week. And on May 21st, 2021 is Bike to Work Day. Bike to Work Week and Day highlight the benefits of cycling. I'll read the proclamation. <clears throat> Whereas the bicycle introduced in the 19th century is an economical, healthy, convenient, an ecologically sound form of transportation and an excellent tool for recreation and enjoyment of Plano's scenic beauty. And whereas bicycles offer an inexpensive means of transportation and provide the opportunity for physical exercise that offers potential health, economic and quality of life benefits. Whereas bicycle groups throughout the nation are promoting greater public awareness in the education of cyclists and motor motorists in the proper and safe process of sharing our roadways is important to ensure the well-being of all. To ensure the safety of everyone sharing the road, cyclists are encouraged to practice the ste steps of safe riding. Follow the rules of the road, obey all traffic control devices, be visible, wear brightly colored clothing at all times with reflectors at night, be predictable, Ride in a straight line, do not swerve between parked cars. Anticipate conflicts, be aware of the traffic around you and be alert at intersections. Wear a helmet that fits on top of your head and replace it if damaged. Now, therefore, I, John B. Munns, Mayor of the City of Plano, Texas, do hereby proclaim May 17th through the 23rd, 2021, as Bike to Work Week, and May 21st, 2021 is Bike to Work Day in Plano. And I do thereby encourage all citizens to join me and the Plano City Council in bicycling to work and urging our friends and neighbors to do the same. Thank you. The next proclamation is May is Building Safety Month Building Safety Month highlights the importance of creating and maintaining safe buildings. The proclamation reads, whereas Building Safety Month is an international campaign that takes place in May to raise awareness of building safety and reinforce the need for modern, regularly updated building codes. And whereas Plano recognizes that our growth and strength depend upon the safety and economic value of the homes, buildings, and infrastructure that serve our citizens. We continually work to address the city's critical issues of safety, energy efficiency, water conservation, 
and resilience in the built environment that impacts our citizens in their everyday lives, as well as in times of natural disaster. And whereas Plano is fortunate to have a vigilant building officials and inspectors, fire prevention personnel, plan examiners, code enforcement officers, and other in the construction industry who work year round to ensure buildings are safe. Whereas the 2021 theme for Building Safety Month is prevent, prepare, and protect building codes safe. Now, therefore, I, John B. Munns, Mayor of the City of Plano, Texas, do hereby proclaim May 2021 is Building Safety Month in the City of Plano and do thereby encourage all citizens to join me and the Plano City Council in commending our dedicated staff in their vigilant efforts to uphold building codes to ensure Plano remains a city of excellence. Thank you very much. Our last proclamation is May is National Historic Preservation Month. National Historic Preservation Month encouraged the saving of American historic treasures. The proclamation reads, whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for revitalizing our neighborhoods, fostering local pride and maintaining community character while enhancing livability. It has the power to protect and enhance societies and neighborhoods by saving and celebrating America's historic treasures. And whereas historic pres preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life and ethnic backgrounds, whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and contributions made by dedication, dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible asp asp aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people. Whereas this place matters is the theme for the 2021 National Preservation Month and is supported by Texas Historical Commission, Heritage Farmstead Association, Heritage Commission, the Texas Pool Foundation, the Plano Art Association, Plano Conservancy for Historic Preservation, North Texas Masonic Historical Museum and Library, National Trust for Historic Preservation, Collin County Historical Commission, Historic Downtown Plano Association. Whereas preservation has worked and is working and will continue to work for Plano because our city leaders, nonprofit leaders, business owners, and citizens recognize the value of our cultural heritage and have worked diligently to preserve, protect, and adaptively reuse these foundations of our community. Now, therefore, I, John B. Munns, Mayor of the City of Plano, Texas, do hereby proclaim May 2021 as Nas National Historic Preservation Month in Plano. I do therefore encourage all citizens to join me and the Plano City Council in calling upon the people of the Plano to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. We all benefit from being aware of our heritage and history. Thank you very much. Our next item, our next item is uh, comments of public interest. Comments of public interest. This portion of the meeting is to allow up to three minutes per speaker with 30 total minutes on items of interest or concern and not on items that are on the current agenda. The council may not discuss these items, but may respond with factual or policy information. The council may choose to place the item on a future agenda. And I do have about 17 speakers this evening. Thank you. In the interest of time, uh, we will allow each speaker two minutes uh, to speak. We're going to have some in person and, and some online. So uh, if you don't mind, Mayor, go ahead. And but I'm sorry, but before we go to the public comments, I think we're probably going to have several people interested in, uh, in an event that occurred last week in Frisco and Plano. Uh, before we do that, could, could I ask uh, our city manager perhaps to, to give us an update uh, on what we know now that we may not know uh, earlier. Sure.
Sure, Councilman. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, as y'all are all aware, we had uh, an incident in Plano on May 2nd. Let me start by saying uh, in Plano, public safety always has been and always will be a priority. On May 2nd, 2021, a Plano police officer was dispatched to a reported traffic hazard call where the caller stated there was a malfunction in the traffic signal light at the intersection of Preston and 121. Due to heavy call volume, only one officer was available to respond to the scene. It was later determined that there was no traffic signal malfunction, but rather protesters who were returning from a planned demonstration in Frisco over the death at the Collin County Jail. Approximately 50 protesters were in and around the roadway. The officer immediately called for backup officers to respond as soon as possible. The officer's priorities in this, at that time were to de-escalate the situation and clear the roadway. During this incident, a female reported that she was assaulted by a male who co confronted the protesters. Due to the position of the crowd, the officer did not witness the assault. The officer de-escalated the situation by removing the male away from the crowd. The officer completed an offense report, which was followed up by our Crimes Against Persons unit the next day. The victim told detectives that the male attempted to knock her phone from her hand, but failed to do so, but he did slap her hand. The woman said she was not injured by the slap. By the slap. It did not hurt, but she did feel threatened by the male's actions. After speaking with the victim and the suspect and reviewing video footage of the incident, detectives filed an assault by contact charge with the municipal court against the male suspect. It's also been reported over social media platforms that a protester pointed a firearm at the male subject that confronted the crowd. These reports are inaccurate. The protester did point an electronic control device, commonly called a taser, at the male subject in an effort to protect the female. Officers on the scene confirmed the device was not a firearm. Electronic control devices can be purchased without a permit or license and the person who pointed the device did not commit a crim criminal offense by doing so. There were no injuries or property damage during this incident, and no one pointed a firearm at anyone. Again, the officer's priorities at the time were to de-escalate the situation and clear the roadway. The roadway was clear and traffic was moving in approximately seven minutes after the first officer arrived. Again, I wanna state public safety is and always has been a priority for the city of Plano. Thank you. Um, if you'll call the first name and would everybody please give their name and where they live, please, uh, before you start uh, speaking. The first speaker is Stephen Bolos. Good evening. Oops, sorry. Good evening. Uh, I live at 7901 Windrose Avenue in Plano. My name is Stephen Bolos. I'm one of the residents there. And this is pretty brief. This is really an opportunity to just set the tone for a challenge that we as residents are having. Uh, two things, real quick, and I, I can, should be able to get this done in two minutes, is we have the Legacy Hall, which has live music Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and sometimes on Sunday. The challenge is, is that the design of the Legacy Hall has three sides of it that are that are confined, a big, large 30-foot retaining wall, and then two other sides where there's plenty of seating that goes three to four stories tall. And so all of the music goes north, north up into the face of our, our condos. And so it's it's very loud. And, and even though I think that there's a challenge, there's, they're trying to maintain the volume levels from the ground, it's different than if you're on the third, fourth, fifth floor. I happen to live on the 18th floor. And it gets pretty loud the higher up you go. The flaw is, is they don't have any sound protection. If that were in place, I don't think we'd be having a major issue with the music. So that's that's a major expense. You know, uh, Legacy Hall is a big tax revenue for Plano, but then our little 90 unit complex is about a, almost a half a billion dollar development and represents gonna, soon to be, once it's occupied, about $6 million in tax dollars, which I think is something to be considered as well. The other major issue are cars, sports cars, high-end sports cars, some not so high-end hot rods, driving and cruising down the wind rows to show off their cars and really revving up and downshifting and blowing a lot of uh, sounds and to the point where one of our residents had 
friends into a big fundraiser who has PTSD. And when one of the cars backfired, the guy actually fell to the ground and walking like this, thinking there was firearms or a gun went off. So I just think that the resolution there is possibly just have some police officers make a few examples or just be around so that eventually it's like a, a speedy road where eventually if you have enough uh, police officers there enough often enough where they people realize there might be a police officer there so they're not going to speed down that road. Uh, so just something to consider. I know you're going to you're probably going to hear a lot of folks tonight talk about this and bring it up and I hope that you'll give it some consideration for the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Jerry Kendrick. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Manager, uh, Council Members. Thank you very much for the opportunity to address the Council. My name is Jerry Kendrick. I live at 7901 Windrose Avenue. And I won't repeat uh, what Steve has just said. Uh, there is a problem with loud cars. The problem is they don't have mufflers or they have a muffler cutout or they have a muffler that is not designed to limit the noise to something that is not excessive or unusual. To give you an idea of how bad it is, I live on the sixth floor and from 100 yards away from the cars on Wind Road or Headquarters Avenue, through double pane glass and over a television with a war movie going on, <laughs> I can plainly hear the cars below. That by any definition is excessive and unusual. I, I have spoken to a police officer that works in the neighborhood and I came away with the impression that uh, officers uh, are, are essentially informed that the law is unenforceable and that they should not issue citations on their own observations, but only if someone complains on the theory that a peace officer can't be offended. Uh, I don't know that that's true. It would be interesting to know how many citations have actually been issued for excessive no noise and exhaust. Uh, I, and I, I think it's not a matter of decibel levels, whether it's the city statute or the Texas Transportation Code. It's excessive and unusual noise. Usual noise is when you pull up to a red light in the car next to you, you can't hear him. When he drives off, you hear the rubber on the road. Excessive and unusual is when I have my windows rolled up, the air conditioner on, and the radio on, and I can hear him from 50 yards away. So thank you very much for your service to the city. And thank you very much for the opportunity to address you. And uh, God bless you all. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Alan Dandy. And I believe he's on Zoom. Alan? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Alan Deonde, and I live at 2809 14th Street in East Plano. Uh, this, uh, honestly, it's a, it's a great time to follow um, everyone from the uh, Winrose location. Uh, I'm, call, I'm actually wanting to uh, see if there could be a study or some sort of an, uh, analysis done on the traffic that is on 14th Street between uh, Rigsby and Ridgewood Drive. We are a, a residential area and uh, we constantly have street racing exhaust that uh, are, I'm assuming modified to some degree because they are extremely loud. Uh, and I've witnessed this as late as 1030 at night. Uh, so again, with the street racing, the loud noise, as well as the ex excessive speed that comes from um, the, the drivers actually uh, heading more uh, in the westbound direction from Shiloh to Jupiter. Um, it, just, it just seems like it's, it's a hazard all the way around. Um, there is a speed limit of 40 miles per hour. I would like to know if we can do an, an analysis of that speed to see if we can actually possibly lower that uh, only because Several factors uh, contribute to the speed. 
we lose a lane on a certain stretch of road and then we gain it back. And it seems like at that point in time, everyone speeds up to try to get, get ahead of the slower traffic. And unfortunately, it's the right lane, that, the lane that's closest to the, the homes here. And uh, we've had several uh, mishaps already, you know, close calls. 15 call. seconds. And uh, again, I would just like to see what we can do about this particular situation on 14th between Rigsby and Ridgedale Road. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. The next speaker is Stephen Gelman. <clears throat> we will try. Catherine Munson. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Go ahead. Fantastic. So my name is Catherine Monson, Plano resident for 12 years. And I'm deeply troubled by the protesters being allowed to block traffic on May 2nd. Thank you so much for the update. I have watched many, many videos of the event. And I will have to share, while I do not know the gentleman who was frustrated and asked them to leave, I really think that being charged with assault by contact, because I've seen that slap on her hand from four angles, seems crazy. If you look at headlines from around the country, we've got the Federalist saying, Plano police do nothing while BLM illegally takes over city streets in Plano. The Washington Examiner video shows police standing by BLM protesters blocking traffic. The post-millennial left-wing activists take over street in Plano. Police do nothing. I'm a big believer in public safety, a bigger believer in law and order. I believe that those actions of the protesters were illegal, and I'm deeply concerned that they've not been arrested, they've not been charged, while one guy who's frustrated has now been doxxed. If you've been on Twitter, this man's home address, his business addresses and the wife of his kids have been put online so he gets injured because he had the courage to stand up for right over wrong. So I am asking you to enforce the laws going forward. I am asking you to arrest the protesters and charge them. And if our laws are not strong enough, I'm asking 15 seconds. I'm asking you to pass stronger laws. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Monson. <laughs> the next speaker is Don Mann. Thank you and good evening. And I'll try to get through this quick. I, I'm Don Mann and I live at 7901 Windrose Avenue. And We've already heard a couple of residents, but just to quickly go through this, I think we're, we've lived here 15 months. We're very pleased with this area of development. We've come to appreciate the retail, the restaurants, the outdoor concert venues, and Legacy West. It's absolutely an asset to the city of Plano and hopefully a model for future development. However, I would request the council and the city to take into account my personal residence and the property boundaries of my residence when enforcing compliance of Plano City Ordinance Number. 2017-12-2. To date, that's not been the case, and the noise is very frustrating in the home environment. Again, we greatly enjoy all the venues in Legacy West. We hope they continue to thrive. Just requesting the city enforce the current ordinance within the property lines of my residence. And the second area of concern I'd like to mention pertains to safety. Uh, a few minutes ago in the Windrose Tower Gym on the fourth floor, my wife was on a treadmill which overlooks Headquarters Drive at the Windrose Avenue intersection. A woman and a man were crossing the street when both were struck by a car. Unfortunately, the woman was killed and the man was injured from this terrible accident. And it was difficult to witness not only from the gym, but from our home, which also overlooks Headquarters Avenue, Head Headquarters Drive. You know, having a front row seat to the daily and nightly traffic patterns on the streets in the area have been very eye-opening. In fact, it's becoming evident that 
Both Headquarters Drive and Communications Parkway are now breeding grounds for drag racing and exhibitions for excessive speed and very loud noise. So because this is such a densely populated area with a large seconds. number on a daily basis, hopefully the safety of these citizens will be a paramount issue for the council and the city's remit. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Ms. Mann. The next speaker is Bernard Campomanes. Good evening. My name is Bernard Campomanes. I live at 2017 Antwerp Avenue here in Plano, Texas. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Manager, ladies, ladies and gentlemen of the council. I left my business early uh, today to come and address you regarding what I have seen and share my I'd say my frustration, but also my disgust at what I saw as a lack of responsiveness of the leadership of our Plano Police Department in handling the BLM agitators this, uh, this last week. I mean, as of last night, or as of yesterday, there have been at least one news source has reported over a million views of one video. And what the viewers saw on the internet was a sole brave Plano police officer having to deal with BLM agitators, block traffic, and uh, people interrupting our commerce in Plano, interrupting our residents and our potential customers. And what that has done is now created a situation where people are less inclined to obey the law and uh, protest legally. They're probably emboldened to come here and do this again because they saw a lack of response from our pol uh, police force. And what's most dangerous is, and I think is what we're missing, is Plano has now been highlighted in the national scene as a place where there's inadequate police response to things like this. And we know these agitators, whether they're Antifa, BLM, or the next plague of extremists, will want to test their mi mindset, their ideas, and their, I'll say their shock troopers here, and sharpen their skills and sharpen their talents on Plano. And I think anyone here, whether they're pro or sympathetic to the BLM cause or not, we don't want our city to become the next Minneapolis, the next Portland, or next Seattle. So I hope, so what I hope is the police department leadership will empower our officers to respond and respond adequately and with enough response that the next time it happens and they respond adequately, it doesn't get blown up in the media as a white supremacist city here in Plano just doing the job of enforcing and protecting the residents and their businesses. So I thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Martha Tate. Uh, good evening. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good evening. And um, thank you for listening to the concerns of the people who vote to elect you. I want to draw your attention to the situation. Okay, by the way, my name is Martha Tate. I live in Fourth Drive. I want to draw your attention to the situation that happened last week regarding the Black Lives Matter protesters blocking the traffic on Highway 121. Uh, before I begin, let me state with the utmost importance that all lives matter, not just black smaller matter. And I fully support you, the council of our city, and the great men and women of our police department that sacrifice endlessly for our safety and security. If protesters are blocking traffic and holding people from their freedom to go where they need to go, it is not a peaceful protest. Secondly, this type of behavior is inherently dangerous to all involved, especially the innocent bystanders, which, by the way, our entire city and its residents are all innocent bystanders. These protests took place near hospitals and blocking the traffic to them. Um, but they couldn't get there because the road was blocked. It's clear to me and the rest of the residents of our great city that they are putting black lives above any everybody else's lives, the very thing they are protesting against. Then um, any action that Plano citizens or police would have taken for protection would have been turned around on our city and projected as racism, just because we were having to protect ourselves for something we're not seconds. even guilty. 
Then people like me who oppose to their narrative, we are called white supremacists, which, by the way, I am a Hispanic, racist, or far right wing, what is completely wrong. So I just demand that people held accountable for their actions, not just citizens, innocent citizens trying to protect themselves. So change the narrative, please. It's not right that the council, police department, side with uh, violent protesters like we have seen all over the United States and it's coming to plan. Thank, so thank you, Ms. Tay. Thank you. John Stafford. Did they time you? Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Tu and Councilmember Grady for putting on a future agenda the issue of political signs that are that are littering our libraries and rec centers during our local elections. I sell signs for a living. I've even sold signs to some of you who are sitting on the city council right now. But it is absolutely ridiculous the number of signs that we have out there. It is litter, it is wasteful. The greenest thing that we can do for the city of Plano is limit the number of signs that our political campaigns can put out during election season so that voters can actually see the signs. It's a lot easier to see fewer signs than it is when you've got a sea of noise out there and you can't make out any one candidate's signs. So I would appreciate having an ordinance that limits the number of signs. Now I've sent some of you a sample ordinance. Um, if those of you who have got it could share it with the rest of the council, that would be great. And that's a good discussion point that we can move on from the forward. So thank you for bringing this up and putting it on our agenda. Thank you very much. Denise Alcaraz. My name's Denise Alcaraz. I live in Mesquite, and what happened on the freeway can definitely come to a freeway in any suburb in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, so I feel like I need to be here. Uh, I'm going to read this to you. Uh, the video I saw of BLM and Plano's troubling and can potentially bring unwanted dangerous issues and harm to citizens. We have already seen concrete evidence of what BLM is capable of in specific cities targeted. This group's agenda is to promote racial discrimination, prejudice, hate, violence, and death. If our elected officials are in office to promote law, order, and safety, city officials must take an active and ongoing part to formulate city and city ordinances and create laws to fight against this agenda to terrorize our suburbs. If you do not stand now, BLM and others will see this as a free ride into our cities to promote their agenda and they will not leave once here if they see no resistance. Do you want this to start in your neighborhood? Thank you. Thank you. Terry Anderson. Hey, Mayor, City Council. My name is Terry Anderson. I'm the uh, founder of Patriots at Large. I represent about uh, five, 6,000 Patriots across the country. Um, I felt it was necessary for me to be here today uh, to address this issue that y'all are having. And I understand this is a difficult situation and um, it's the police officer was put in a difficult situation as well. But we do need to address this better. And the reason I'm here and I do not live in Plano or Kong County, I have lived here before, uh, I live in Denton County, but this is something that is a national problem. This could end up in my doorstep. It could end up at anyone's doorstep in any city, in any state in this country. So I felt it was uh, necessary for me to be here. I want to read a letter that my wife, April, wrote to um, the chief of police here. If I can find it. Mr. Ed Dane, the incident that recently happened in Plano was completely unacceptable. 
As a very proud Back the Blue supporter and a frequent visitor of Plano, Texas, this type of behavior should never be allowed to happen. And while I understand the officer was in an unfortunate position, situation and was alone, the officer directed the man who got out of the vehicle to leave the protesters alone. Thank you. An individual can be heard saying off camera. Why would an officer protect the law-breaking protesters? Blocking the road for sane citizens and emergency vehicles is not the only breaking the law, but it is also allowed to happen. You can also clearly see that a gun, whether it was a gun or not, it looked like a gun to me, was pointed at a man. And if I thought it was a gun, then I'm sure that that guy thought it was a gun. Uh, this person should be immediately charged if he was walking around with a gun without a gun permit. Law-abiding citizens are having to fight hard to keep our gun rights, and these type of events, if not handled properly, only show people that this behavior is okay and will not and will be tolerated. Pointing a gun or a taser or anything that looks like a gun at anybody should not be allowed. I understand that being an officer in today's world is something that most people would not even consider doing. The treatment of officers over the past year is heartbreaking. Our prayers and support are always with you. I have the utmost respect for each of you, each and every one of you. This is not Portland. This is Plano, Texas. As Texans, we lead and set examples. We make it clear that this type of behavior is not to be tolerated in Texas. If this behavior is allowed and not handled, this will only set a chain of events that will continue to get worse. Thank you. I have something else to say, please. I would also like to request that the city council enact an ordinance that specifically prohibits blocking of any thoroughfare and penalizes the persons responsible. Also, that a rapid response uh, team is set up for this specific issue. This officer should never have been put in this impossible situation and has to defer to mob rule. These are our streets. Our streets. <laughs> Sir. We all pay for Sir, them. We all use them could you for wrap, our kids. Sir, I've, I've given you over three minutes. Could you wrap it up? I didn't hear the thing go off. I'm just I'm sorry. Here. I'm sorry. We should never have to fear for the safety of our family on our streets. Thank you. Amanda Massengale. Hello, I am Amanda Massengale and I live at 5008 Sundown Drive here in Plano, Texas and have since 2000. Um, I am here to let y'all know what the protest was about because that hasn't been spoken of yet and it's a heartbreaking story. Please, hi. Can you please hold my time until they're done? Please be quiet and let, we're being quiet for everybody else, okay? Let the speaker speak. Thank you. Marvin D. Scott III was taken into custody by Allen Police Department for allegedly possessing less than two ounces of marijuana at the Allen Outlet Mall, March 14, 2021. He was transported to a hospital for evaluation due to his mental state at the time of his arrest. Marvin Scott III was detained at the Collin County Detention Center shortly after 6.30 p.m. on March 14. His behavior was strange, according to Sheriff Skinner. It was publicly disclosed that the detention officers attempted to strap Marvin Scott III to a bed during Marvin Scott's detainment. Uh, it was also disclosed that the officers sprayed a chemical agent at Mr. Scott and then applied a spit hood to cover his face. Marvin Scott III died in Collin County Detention Center custody at 1022 on March 14, 2021. The medical examiner after that letter was written to the sheriff um, has ruled it to be a homicide. So that's why people are really upset. As a mother, I cannot, as a mother, I cannot imagine having to bury my child. I have met Marvin Scott the Third's mother, looking into her eyes and telling her that she is grieving wrong or that forming a community to fight for justice for her son, the officers have been fired. Sheriff Skinner says they were wrong. One of them got reinstated but no arrests have been made. Yet he was arrested under the suspicion that he was mumbling to himself and had less than two ounces of marijuana. That's not right. And the cognitive dissonance in here blows my mind. We're an educated city. We are an educated city. This is ridiculous. And that's my time and I'll respect that. Thanks.
Please. Everyone, please. Unless you're speaking, please don't interrupt. Thank you. Ashura Mason. Okay, I can make mine very quick to the point. I'm not a Plano resident. I live in Dallas. I came all the way out here um, from the south side of Dallas because I don't want what happened here in Plano to, to spread and trinkle out throughout Texas. And just like everybody said, the, the people that you know came before me, that this is something that when these protesters see this happening, they they take this as a green light to be able to allow this to happen throughout. And as a black woman, I am ashamed and I am appalled at what I saw. Absolutely. They do not represent me as a black woman and they do not represent in my opinion, the black community. This has to stop. And this, and along with this critical race theory, this critical race theory, this indoctrination, this has to stop. I am sick of it. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. I am not a victim. I have, I have just as much opportunity as everyone else does. And it, we've come a long ways and it just seems like we keep going back and I'm sick and I'm tired of it. I'm sick of the media hyping this up, turning blacks against whites, whites against blacks, blacks against Asians, Asians against Indian, Indian against African, African. I'm sick of it. And if we don't put a stop to it. I'm tired of them fear-mongering the police, making them feel like, like they're bullying. They are straight up bullies. This has to stop. Allow the police to do their job. Thank you. Joanne Kendrick. Mr. Mayor, Mr. City Manager, uh, Council Members, thank you very much for this opportunity to address the Council. I'm Joanne Kendrick. I live at Winrose Towers, 7901 Winrose Avenue. Uh, my comments are exactly as my husband, Jerry Kendrick, uh, said about the loud noise, so I won't repeat that. But I do appreciate your attention to this matter and uh, appreciate your, what you do to the, for the citizens of Plano. Michael Andrews. Hey, good evening. I'm Michael Andrews. I live at 3617 Oakcrest Drive in Plano. Um, I just kind of last minute found about the meeting rushed here, so I apologize for my gym attire. Um, I came because my family and I came because we, of the incident, the traffic incident that we saw, um, the video of. Uh, but this is a lot more than just a traffic incident right, or blocking traffic. We saw the gentleman that got out that was so angry. I don't know him. I'm not defending his actions. But I think a lot of us can probably sympathize with that anger because we've watched other cities around our country burn to the ground, right, and burned by organizations that tell you their mission is to tear down the system, to destroy our way of life. And... When the police don't do the job, citizens step in. And that's not what we want, right? We saw that happen with like Kyle Rittenhouse. And that's what happens when the police don't do what the police are supposed to do, right? And it's not our job as citizens. I was a military officer, and my fighting days are behind me, and I don't want to do that again. But for the first time in my life, I've been seriously concerned about the future of our country and the future that our children are growing up in. And these things are disguised as a Black Lives Movement. We all believe Black Lives Matter. All lives matter, right? But it's the organization and what they stand for. And we've watched the police go from protect and serve 
to aid and abet with a lot of these organizations. And we don't want that here. We are behind you. We are behind the police. Okay? We support you. We'll, you know, we're, we're here for you, but we expect you to be here for us as well. Yeah, that's right. Steve Levine. Now for something a little different. Uh, Mayor Munns, honorable council members, my name is Steve Levine. I live at 6212 Jacqueline Drive here in Plano. I am happy to be here on a Munns Day uh, to honor the swearing in of our new mayor. Uh, I would further like to congratulate him and Councilman Smith and Ricky Ardelli on their election wins and wish them all good luck as they do their best to serve our city and its citizens. It is my sincere hope that this council will take up the topic of a sign, campaign sign ordinance as preliminarily outlined by John Stafford and help to control sign proliferation on city and PISD property and anywhere else legally permissible. It is the visual and environmentally correct thing to do. Uh, additionally, I'd like to congratulate the Comprehensive Planning Review Committee for recently agreeing on a plan to present to the Planning and Zoning Commission for their review. This was a great effort, and having listened to all the public debate, I know that reaching consensus was no simple task. However, once this plan reaches the Council, I wish to note and remind that while great pains were taken to appoint a committee that would represent the interests of all of Plano's citizens, only one member is from an apartment household. And that represents not the 35 or 40% of Plano households or Plano citizens who live in apartments or rental homes, but only 6%. To be a truly united plan, these households must receive greater representation in any future review of our comprehensive plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Levine. All right, our last speaker is Hava Johnston. Good evening, Council, and congratulations, uh, Mayor Munns, on your new election. And for all of you who have really held on to some amazing campaign times during these struggling times. Um, I'm here um, as one of the protesters that were there on Sunday, and I'd like to shed a little light as to why we were there. Because instead of being so appalled and so upset because you might have been distracted in traffic for seven minutes, we're mourning the loss of a community member. A mother and a father are mourning the loss of their son, a family has lost a member, a beloved one of theirs. They lost that person at the hands of eight detention officers who your tax dollars paid their salaries. We are mourning as a community. And for 57 days, this family has asked for justice, answers, and nothing more than any one of you or anyone in this audience would ask for if it was their child lying on a cold slab in a morgue, knowing that their tax dollars helped pay for their murder. For 57 days, that family has asked for answers and gotten zero. So what do they do? The only thing they can do, they use their voice. They use their First Amendment right. They have held six peaceful protests throughout Frisco and Allen. We've managed to cross the border of Plano simply to get back where we started from. And because of the deranged, lunatic attitude of one person, one individual has managed to overshadow and deflect the point behind all of this. A man died at the hands of eight Collin County detention officers. A man that should be alive today, a man who could have stood trial for his possible crime. But he's not here to speak for himself. The Scott family's not here to speak tonight. 
So I'm here to speak for them. And I really, truly hope and believe that our community is better than this. To have seen the comments, just flat out ugly behavior when we're talking about the mourning of a family. I truly believe that we're better than this, and I do not feel like the behavior of that one individual is truly a reflection on this great city, this great county, or this great state. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please. Excuse me. Oh, please, if you could please be quiet. We we have some speakers here at the council. Uh, I'd like to reply with some factual information. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, there witnessing what was going on for about two minutes before it uh, left my field of vision. Uh, for the time that I saw it, nobody was attempting to cross the road, just standing in the roadway. Mr. Mayor. Please. Please, thank you. Is this a public, is this an open no, this is not an agendized item. We're we're done with our public comments. Miss Miss Two, do you please? This is a city council meeting. Okay, we have had our public comments. They they have ended, and now we're going to move on with our council meeting. Okay, Miss Two. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would like to, um, if I may, uh, add um, a few items on the agenda for um, in the future. One of them is um, with regard to the, um, the, the noise level that, um, that I believe is addressed in our ordinance. Um, I, I believe, I don't remember how it ended last time when we had the, um, the, the address on the ordinance on, on noises, but I would like to have a updated report on that as well as the enforcement measure that um, relates to that. Um, that's one part of it. And I realize that the current comments sort of relate also to enforcement. So um, it may be a, perhaps a good time in the future agenda to have Chief Drain come and address the council with regard to what are some of the current ordinance enforcement and how um, that is being enforced in our city. That'd be very good. Second. Um, also, Mayor and Council, I'd like to clarify one issue about the noise, which is um, <clears throat> our prosecution office, they will take a complaint from an officer on the unreasonable standard on mufflers where they're broken, altered, or missing the muffler, or because it's designed to allow excessive noise. And so we'll circle back with police legal advisor tomorrow. They have a separate legal advisor, as you guys know, and make sure we're just all on the same page about that. Everybody okay with that? Okay. We'll bring that uh, uh, in the near future. Let's move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda. The consent agenda will be acted upon in one motion and contains items which are routine and typically non-controversial. Items may be removed from the agenda for individual discussion by a council member, the city manager, or any citizen. The presiding officer will establish time limits based upon the number of speaker requests. Thank you. Motion to approve except for item P. Second that motion. <clears throat> Thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve consent agenda with the exception of item B. Please vote. P is it? P is in Paul. P is P. in Papa. Did I say? You said P. B. That's P. <laughs> Let me clarify. <laughs> item P as in Paul. Please vote. <laughs> Yes for me. Thank you, Lily. That's a yes for Miss Bow. Motion passes eight to zero. Item P. P. 
An ordinance to amend section 12-73.1D, same, specific zones of Article 4, Speed, Chapter 12, Motor Vehicles and Traffic of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Plano, Texas, to enact school zones for summer school sessions within the city limits of the City of Plano, and providing a penalty clause, a repealer clause, a severability clause, a savings clause, and a publication date, and an effective date, excuse me. Mayor and Council, Mr. Thornhill, would you like to discuss the item? For you every year about this time for school zones related to Plano and Frisco ISD. Uh, we received a late change uh, from one of the Plano schools for one of their sites for summer schools, so that's why we had to make a quick adjustment and the uh, change should be in your packet with you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any questions in regard to item P? Do I have a motion? I have a motion to approve item P. Second. As amended, please. As amended. As amended? As amended. Thank you very As much. Amended P is in pop. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> motion to approve item P as amended. Please vote. Yes, from me. Thank you. Motion passes eight to zero. I did, I did omit uh, one thing in our uh, board appointment. I, I apologize, this will not be the last time I make a mistake as the mayor. The city council would like to recognize the recent appointment of Phil Dyer to the North Texas Municipal Water District Board. Thank you, uh, Mayor Phil, we appreciate it very much and I apologize for my omission. Next item. Public hearing items. Applicants are limited to 15 minutes presentation time with a five minute rebuttal if needed. Remaining speakers are limited to 30 total minutes of testimony time with three minutes assigned per speaker. The presiding officer may amend these times as deemed necessary. Non-public hearing items. The presiding officer will permit public comment for items on the agenda not posted for a public hearing. The presiding officer will establish time limits based upon the number of speaker requests, the length of the agenda, and to ensure meeting efficiency, and may include a cumulative time limit. Speakers will be called in the order the requests are received until the cumulative time is exhausted. Item number one. Public hearing and consideration of an ordinance as requested in zoning case 2020-18 to amend the comprehensive zoning ordinance of the city ordinance number 2015-5-2 as heretofore amended. Granting specific use permit number 184 on 7.8 acres of land located on the west side of Shiloh Road, 347 feet north of Plano Parkway <coughs> in the city of Plano, Collin County, Texas presently zoned Research Technology Center with specific use permit 639 for electrical substation. Directing a change accordingly in the official zoning map of the city, providing a penalty clause, a repealer clause, a savings clause, a separability clause, a publication clause, and an effective date. Applicant, Dallas Area Rapid Transit, City of Plano, and Encore Electric Delivery Company. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and Executives. I'm Christina Day, Director of Planning. And item number one was submitted under the Plano Tomorrow Conference of Plans, so will be reviewed based on the standards of that plan. Um, this item uh, is, you can see, a somewhat uniquely shaped tract of land, and that is because the station is separated from the primary parking area uh, by a electrical substation. Um, you can see the area is zoned primarily research technology and on the slide um, or the document in front of you, you can also see the area of notice. The blue line indicates the 200 foot notice and the uh, red line indicates the 500 foot notice. Um, <coughs> This is an aerial photograph of the area that is looking to be rezoned to include the SUP for the transit station. Um, to the north of this area, the land uses include an existing data center um, owned by the independent school district, 
Plano Independent School District, religious facilities, and a household care institution. To the east include a existing electrical substation and across Shiloh Road, there are existing light intensity manufacturing, moderate intensity manufacturing, and office showroom warehouse uses. To the south and west are light intensity manufacturing uses. So there was a preliminary site plan submitted with this case, and that is shown on the screen. Uh, you can see the station to the north along the existing rail line. Uh, the, then it moves around the substation area and a parking area on the larger southern area of the request. So the comprehensive plan shows this area. It does include a DART facility designation in this location, um, which is very helpful to this request. Um, the future land use map shows the employment center future land use category, which supports the transit designation to provide um, access, transportation access to this location. The growth and change map shows this area as conserve and enhance which does expect uh, to retain the current form of development, but experience some minor infill and ongoing rehabilitation, which would also support the addition of a transit station. So this is a map of the Silver Line as it's proposed. So you can see that it does extend from the DFW airport through Carrollton, Addison, and leading into uh, through Richardson into Plano. So that is the current alignment. Um, it will reach Plano at the 12th Street station, will be the first station in Plano, and then a second station here at Shiloh Road. So with, in regard to responses, we did not receive any responses within 200 feet. However, we did receive other responses around the city three in support, three neutral, and three in opposition to this request. The Planning and Zoning Commission did recommend support of this case with a vote of eight to zero. And with that, I'll be available to answer questions you might have on this case. And I do believe there is a representative of DART who has additional slides and a presentation for you this evening. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? All right, I'll open the public hearing and we'd love to hear from the applicant. Carl Crawley, 2201 Main Street, Dallas, Texas, representing DART again. Um, I was here, I guess, what, two weeks ago for the uh, 12th Street and the infamous aerial station, which is on the red line, but we're not getting into that confusion again. Um, I really, unless y'all want to see some slides, I don't. I, my wife has texted me and said, Hurry home, the storms are on the way. If then I thought I heard some thunder while we were sitting in between the excitement that I wasn't participating in. Um, this is the uh, beginning or end of line. Let's go with the beginning of the line in Plano, right? Yeah. Um, the uh, Shiloh Station, um, just a little sort of um, the site plan that Christina showed, there is a uh, area called landscape area. Um, it's set aside for future parking. Um, end of line stations are always a hit or miss. They're either very overcrowded or not crowded at all. I happen to live in Rowlett and the end of line station and in, in the in that line, we actually have set up a side where you get a sticker if you live in Rowlett, you can park up front and the rest of the people you understand. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are that are using the rail line, which is good, um, that don't pay the uh, sales tax or don't belong in the member city. So anyway, uh, there is some area set aside for future parking if it's needed. Let's hope it is. So that means the rail line's being used. So um, the uh, uh, revised somewhat uh, fair date opening date is uh, 2024. We had something that happened last year that has kind of slowed down the whole world. I think we all, if I get my mask about how you'd know what it was about so i'm here to answer any questions um otherwise this is the last of the three silver line related stations i'll leave it like that since two of them are just silver line so well thank you any questions uh yes <clears throat> thank you mayor just uh, one question 
Uh, I appreciated uh, what you said last time about the uh, the issues that have been brought up regarding the Parker Road station and uh, trash and related issues. Uh, I was wondering, I, I know it's only been two weeks, but uh, wondering what, if any, progress has been made so far uh, on those issues and uh, uh, how DART is proceeding in that regard. Well, I'll be honest, I haven't talked to the community representative because that's I'm not involved in the light rail line for that up there. And, and that station, obviously, is a light rail station. If we discuss, this is a whole different scenario. Sure. We'd love to have the... We'd love to have the traffic here. Uh, and also that this is a different scenario of the surrounding properties and some of the issues involved um, on all these stations here. This is an industrial area and probably won't have the, the same issues. But but they are aware of it and were made aware of it before the last meetings, before PNZ actually, when those issues came up. So Very good. Well, thank you so much for that response and for Dart's work on those issues. Uh, I, I suppose if we could uh, receive uh, an update when uh, I will have this made, that would I'll be have the community time. relations people get with the staff on that. Perfect. That's probably the best people involved in that. Perfect. So. Thank you so much. Sure. For Councilman Greg. Yes, sir. Um, just a real quick question. I noticed that this little sliver of land that's on the west of <laughs> Encore substation there. Um, is this a, this is a walkway between the station and the parking area? Yeah, and that's actually the reason why all three stations didn't come together. Um, that little sort of sliver there is owned by Encore. And Encore, um, uh, we do work for Encore. They're very possessive of their land. So let's just be nice about it. Um, they didn't want to give it to us and or sell it to us or anything else. So actually what was arranged was a swap. They got a little more land on the south side of their station and gave up that. So yes, that is a walkway. And there's also obviously a walkway on Shiloh Road to get from there to the station. So you can go either way on Shiloh Road, uh, a, a large sidewalk there or a walkway there. It's also got some landscaping and fencing to keep you sort of away from the uh, from the substation. Yeah, the, the question that I had, because um, I wanted to make sure that that was a walkway and, and not uh, some other easement for something else, um, is that it's a bit of a distance. I mean, it's not you know, miles away, but it's a bit of a distance. Is it covered for those individuals that may be walking from the rail to the parking lot while it's raining? Like uh, today? No, and, and there's probably a couple of reasons why. One, the, the expense of all of it, and two, Encore doesn't let you really put structures underneath their power lines. Mm -hmm. So um, I know we've done work for Encore, and they don't like things around their stations or substations. So they wouldn't have allowed that, even if it had been proposed. They don't allow... Um, they don't allow large trees near them. Uh, that's why the shrubs in there is not large trees right there. Um, actually, uh, Homeland Security doesn't allow large trees near power lines either. So um, that's the reason it's not covered. Um, I guess you will get wet. Um, um, uh, maybe jog. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Or, or actually, I guess if you had someone that could drop you off at the uh, the Twelfth Street Station, you could. It's a little closer. The Kiss and the Ride part of the Twelfth Street Station. This also has on Shiloh has some bus. I'll call them bus bays, but they're little pull offs, uh, angular pull offs for the buses to serve this. And you can see it. I guess you can see there in that little green area along Shiloh, little sort of angled areas. That's for buses to pull off the roadway drop off their pastures and they can just swing back into the roadway. So there are bus bays along there too. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Do we have any speakers cards for this item? We have no speakers on this item. All right. Thank you. Seeing that we don't have any, I'll combine the comments to the council. Motion to approve. Second that motion. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. How do you vote, Lily? Do we have any speakers cards for the sign? We have no speakers on the side. All right. Thank you. Seeing that we don't have any, I'll combine the comments of the council. <laughs> That's pretty good. Councilman, Councilwoman Bout, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Thank you. Motion passes eight to zero. Thank you. Next time. I'll get, I'll get my salutations right soon. Sorry. 
Item number two, public hearing and consideration of appeals of the Planning and Zoning Commission's denials of zoning case 2021-003 and associated concept plan 2021-001, requesting to rezone 19.1 acres located at the southwest corner of Plano Parkway and Executive Drive from Corridor Commercial to plan development <coughs> corridor commercial to allow multifamily residents as a permitted use and to modify development standards, which may include, but are not limited to, the location and size of multifamily use, building setbacks, maximum floor ratio, open space, landscape requirements, building design, parking, and other development standards. Zoned corridor commercial and located within the 190 tollway, <coughs> Plano Parkway Overlay District. Applicant on Nelp Property Owner LLC Care of Bay West Development. The applicant is requesting to table this item to June 28th and is available for comments or questions if you if you have any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff on this item? All right. Thank you, Ms. Day. I'll open the public hearing. Oh, sorry. All right. My apologies. Any have, anybody have any questions for the applicant? On another day. All right. Any speaker's cards? No. All right. Seeing none, we'll close this item, confine the comments to the commission. Motion to table this item till June 28th. Second. I have a motion and a second to uh, table the item till June 28th. Please vote. <clears throat> yes, for me. Thank you. Motion passes eight to zero to table the item to June 28th. Thank you. Next item. Item number three, consideration of a resolution to provide the city manager authority related to personnel procurement, public meetings, and city code and policy decisions necessary for issues that arise during the state and federal emergency declarations related to the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, and providing an effective date. Mayor and Council, these are the additional authorities that you have granted me uh, throughout COVID. I think we are coming to an end of this. My thought was to extend one last time through the end of July to get past the Council holiday month, uh, knowing that vaccines are still start being distributed to um, uh, youths now. It looks like uh, adolescents from uh, under the age of 15 are <coughs> still going through. We have some vaccine operations that we are winding up, as uh, I notified you last week. Uh, but I don't anticipate um, uh, this being needed past July. Um, but again, it, this is authority that you granted me um, throughout COVID. So that would be my recommendation. Councilman Grady. Uh, I would just like to say with the um, with the uh, act uh, in the distribution of funds today that was announced by the federal government, this is this is probably necessary. Um, my understanding is that um, the city of Plano is uh, going to be allocated another 32 million. I believe that is the correct number. Um, and so I think it will be important to be able to manage those funds um, well when they come in. Um, it just happened today, so there's a lot of understanding of what those funds are. And so I think that it is important to extend this uh, at this time. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of uh, clarifying questions, uh, making sure my understanding is correct. The, both the state and the federal uh, disaster declarations pertaining to COVID-19 are still in force. And should either one of those terminate prior to the end of July, or should the council determine that the council would like to rescind the authority, any of those events would end this uh, prior to the end of July. Is, is that correct? The council could rescind this at any time uh, beyond this. So at any council meeting, we could take that up to, for council to rescind that based upon the expiration. But I don't believe that the, ex, the expiration- It does. It does. 
I yeah, I, 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 I thought I thought I saw that. That's, in why, the that's why I looked to the attorney. <laughs> um, Anthony's, so, Anthony's trying to trick you. I think. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I wasn't trying to trick. I was really just trying to. It put was that a long on question to ask. ask. No, I, but, I know. I, I, I asked too long questions. But no, we're uh, that has always been the the council uh, prerogative to uh, to end at any given time. So that is up to council. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, with that, I will uh, uh, move for approval of this ordinance through uh, July 31st of 2021. And second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to, to approve agenda item number three. Please vote. Um, yes, for me. Thank you, Councilwoman Bow. We have, uh, it passes eight to zero. With no Further business, I uh, want to congratulate Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Riccadelli and uh, Councilman Smith, and thank you for your patience. I'll continue to get better at this. We are adjourned. strike in the window, the window glass can fail, the window frame can fail, and when that glass breaks out, now the force